In today's video, we are creating some basic contacts and passwords pages. I will be creating a few slightly different variations. This time I will not be creating a doggy themed page, but we will resume them in the next episode. There's only so much you can really do with passwords and um, contacts pages. So let's go ahead and jump into it. This should be a fairly quick video today. So the first thing we're gonna do is create our new spread so we're going to go to the plus over here and we are going to right click parent options and we are going to rename this one contacts and say okay let's go ahead and hit the w so that we can see our lines and the first thing we're going to do is create a box i am going to make this box three inches wide by one and a half inches high and say okay. I am going to then apply our object style that we created in episode eight that we've been using every single episode since. So if you did not do it, I would go and check how we did it or create your own. But basically we're gonna click boxes. It's just giving us a half a point and a 70% black and rounded corners. Now I'm going to bring this over here. Now I want to make sure to get my sizing right. So I am going to go ahead and create these boxes first to make sure our sizing is right. So I am going to hold option and shift or alt and shift and click and drag over until I have a gap that I'm comfortable with. Okay, so that's a good gap for me. We have extra room, so we are going to select both, um, put our mouse over our little box here till we get our double arrows and then click and drag over to resize it both at the same time. And now we are gonna do the same thing going down, but before we do that, Let's go ahead and create our title so that we can make sure we have the proper spacing up top first. So I'm just gonna drag a text box margin to margin and then I am going to say contacts and then I'm going to apply our paragraph style that we created in the very first episode called page headers and see where we're at. And that looks pretty good. We could probably bring it up a little bit, but that's good. I don't want to have it too close. So I'm happy with where we're at here. So let's go ahead, let's select both of these. We're going to drag it down until we have a gap pretty close to um, this gap here. I am off a little bit, but let's... Let's do that. Because I hit the down, I'm gonna have to do that again because now you see if you get to that point, see those little marks to the right are showing you this is the equal distance from those up there, which is what we're looking for. And let's go ahead and duplicate that two more times. So edit, duplicate, edit, duplicate. And we are just about to the bottom, so what we could do is grab all of them, and then drag it down to resize it just a little bit. Okay, now I'm happy with that, but I'm gonna end up deleting all of these because what I don't want to do is I do not want to have to create it in one box and then in all the others. I'd rather create it once and then copy and paste the rest. So let's go ahead now that we have our proper size and let's just delete that. All right, so now we're gonna be working in this box here. I want to create a separate box for the top. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw another box. Actually, you know what we could do. Let's do this. Let's copy this one. So Command C, select the box, Command C or Control C, then Command or Control V, and then we're going to make it much smaller much, much smaller, we're going to bring it up to the top. So select both, then select the outside box again to make it the key object. You should have this blue box. And then I'm going to center it horizontally, and then I am going to align it to the top vertically. And now what I want to do is I want to get rid of the rounded parts here. I don't want that. So what we can do is we can, with the box selected, we're gonna come over here to corner and we are gonna make sure that this is unlinked. That's what this one, this means, unlinked. And we are gonna do the bottom two. So you can see the bottom left and the bottom right, we are gonna change to zero. So zero, 
Okay, zero and zero. Okay, and we have now gotten rid of those here. And so it really just looks like this is a line across. Um, and I'm doing it as a separate box because I want to fill this with a color. So I am going to go ahead and I'm going to fill this with one of our colors. Um, so select this box. I'm going to pick the purple, but obviously this is quite dark um, and going to be hard to write on. So we are going to bring this tint way down. 38, 30, 37. That looks good. Something around there. All right. So now I'm ready to add some text in here. I'm going to come over to the text tool. I'm going to make myself a little box in here and I'm going to type name because this is where the name is going to go. I want to, let's see if I have a paragraph style I want to use here. Um, section is fine. It's just a little bit big. So let's choose that and then we can just make the font smaller and I'm going to move it over to the right there. So I think, let's see what this looks like. That looks good to me. So we have a 13 point um, and we have the section header and that looks good to me. So that's going to be the person's name. And now in here is where we're going to add information. And this is where really using underline method for creating lines is beneficial versus tables. You can still do it tables, but it would be much more complicated. It's a lot easier to use lines. So I'm going to show you how to do that. First thing we're going to do is create a text box and we're going to create it basically the same size as this, keeping it on the inside. We are going to make sure, want to make sure that we are starting up at the top of the box. My default is for it to be in the middle. Yours may already be at the top. I just, I've changed my default setting. But if yours is on the middle or the bottom and you need to change it to the top, it's Command B or Control B will bring up the text frame box. You can also right click and go to text frame box as well. And here is where you're going to select see your vertical justification minus centered. You want it to be top. I am going to choose 12 point font is fine. I think let's go with our Adorn Roman that we've been using and let's see how this works out. I'm going to type in address. You know what? I, I definitely want this to be 70%. So let's change that. Okay. Now I want to type address. Let's see where we're at here. We're a little too high. So what I'm going to do is just bring this box down a little bit. I just don't want to be that close. That looks good. All right. So now after I've typed address, I'm going to give a little space here. I want a line after this and for people to actually put the address. And this is how we're going to be using our underline options. You are going to hold option or alt and click on this, on the underline button up here. And that's going to give you the underline options box. Check underline, choose your weight. Our weight's going to be 0.5 because that's what we use. It's going to be our 70% black and I don't want an offset. I don't need an offset. All right. And then we want it to just be a solid line. Now for the address, I just want the line to go to the end. If you hit space or you hit tab, okay, it's going to add an underline wherever you do that. If you just want to go to the end of your text box, it's shift tab. And then you want to create a full line underneath shift tab again full line. Now the distance between these lines is directly correlated with your font size. So if you want the distance between the lines to be smaller, you have to highlight this and reduce your font. If you want it wider, you increase your font. Okay. So this is enough for the address. We're going to do two lines for the address. Okay. So now in the next line, I want to type something, but I don't want to underline like this. So I have to go and I have to click the underline button to turn it off and then go down to the next line. Now I can type email. I want like a little space there. And then I want this line to go to the end. So I'm going to go and I'm going to click the underline again and then shift tab to go to the end. As long as I set this up the first, like when I first started, it should continue to give me the same underline every time I click it. I shouldn't have to 
um, go into the box again, the underline box again. Again, the next line is going to have another, um, some more text. So I'm going to turn the line off, hit enter to go to the next line. This time we're going to type phone, a space, click the underline. But this time I am not going to go to the end. I am just, because you don't need a whole line for a phone number. I'm just going to hit tab twice and then I'm going to turn this off again. I'm going to hit space and then I'm going to type birthday space and then I'm going to hit the underline again and now I'm going to do shift tab to the end. If you don't like where this is and say, oh, you want more room for birthday or you want birthday more in the middle, you can just backspace and then it backspaced that much because I hit tab instead of space, but you can go ahead and adjust it that way. I'm just hitting the space bar to add that back. So that's fine. Let's come back over here. Let's again, turn off the underline, hit enter to go to the next line. And we are going to say notes. So anything the customer might want to remember about this person, they might have there in notes and then we are going to choose the underline again and i am going to shift tab to go over do i want another line underneath i don't actually have another line underneath for mine but you can if you want or you can just adjust this down a bit or you don't really need another line if they want more room they can write it on the bottom there so that's how you go about making something like that. We have our contact, we have address, we have email, we have phone number. If you want to add more space, but you don't necessarily want to increase the font, you can also highlight everything and you should be able to increase um, your letting. So increase the letting, we'll widen it a little more without increasing the font. If you want to fill that a little bit more if you want to do that. And I think that's fine. Okay, so it looks good. Now that we have that done, the rest is so easy. Let's group all this together. So I selected everything. I hit Command G or Control G, and now it's all grouped as one object. I'm going to hold Option and Shift, and I'm going to drag it over until this is on the right margin. And now I'm going to select both of these. I'm going to hold option and shift and drag down. Again, I want to keep it close to the same as that. And now option drag down until it tells me over here that they are the same. And you can really keep doing it that way because it does indicate to you if you see the little marks on the right hand side there that it is the same distance. And now we're a little bit low, so I must have them more space than I did before. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select, I'm going to select all of these. I'm just selecting this side. You can either group each of these pairs together and then we could do it all at once. Or if you don't want to do that, just do it one at a time. So let's correct, um, select one column. Select the top box to make it the key object, and we are going to adjust the spacing. So let's see how 0.04 is. I think it's going to be too small, but we can check it out. We are adjusting our vertical spacing. It's actually not enough, so let's go ahead, change this to three. And actually, that looks, that looks pretty close, so I think we're okay because I can just bump it up one. Okay, so let's do the same thing here then. Select it all, select the top, distribute vertically, and then let's just move it up one. And that's it, we're perfectly aligned. You can also go back, you could change these colors, you can make them different colors, um, whatever it is you would like to do. Let's, I'm gonna show you one more, a little more basic version um, really quickly. So I'm gonna draw a box over here about the same height as that box, but I'm gonna do it full width across. We're gonna apply our object style boxes. All right, we are going to um, click, hold, and drag contacts over because well, there's no need to show you how to do that again. All right, so what we're gonna do with this box is we are going to make two text boxes. I am going to draw one halfway, again, 
Command B or Control B if you need to change the alignment to top. I am choosing, we're leaving 12 font. We are choosing Adorn, Roman, and 70% black, and that's fine. Okay, so here we're just going to do something a little more basic. I am going to go ahead, let's see if this still works. Fine. Okay, that still works fine. Okay, so we're going to say name and tab shift to the end. We are going to turn off our underline and we are going to say enter and we are going to say address and space and then we are going to hit our underline and then shift tab and then I want two lines for the address so I'm going to shift tab again. Now I'm going to turn off the underline, hit enter to come to the next line, and I'm going to say home number. Hit space, hit underline, shift tab. Underline again to turn it off, hit enter, and we are going to say notes. And space, and then underline button, and then shift tab. Um, maybe we might want to space this out just a little bit more. So let's go ahead and add a little bit there. And now I am just going to click up or hold option and shift click, hold and drag over to copy this over here. And I, you know what? I want a little gap here. So I am going to move this box over a little bit. So there's a little bit of a space here. This is going to not have notes. So that will just carry over. And I'm just going to simply change the information I have here. Business is just the way to give a little more information. Let's say cell number. And then here I'm going to, you have to turn off that and I'm going to say birthday space. We're going to have to hit enter there. There we go. Birthday space. Okay. So now we have more information. We can make this box, these boxes smaller now. They don't need to be quite so large. Whoops. A little extra space there. All right, so now we can go ahead and make this box smaller as well because that's just a little excessive. We don't need it that big. So in here, well, here we have address, email, phone number, birthday notes. We have business. We have cell phone, home. Um, so a little more information there. And it's a little more plain. We're going to keep it just like that, a little simpler. Let's drag that. All right, so let's go ahead and let's group all this together so we can make copies without messing anything up. So just drag a box over the whole thing and Command G or Control G to make a cop or to group. And then we're going to hit Option and Shift and click and drag down to make a copy. And from here, I'm going to go ahead and say one, two, let's let's step and repeat four times and just see how many what our spacing looks like oh my gosh that's perfect i don't know how that became perfect but that became perfect okay so that's another version of it a little simpler this has a little color this has a little more information so um, those are two options for contacts now let's go ahead and move over to our passwords pages okay so one of them is going to be very very similar to our passwords so i our contacts so let's go ahead over here let's create a new spread let's rename this one um we're going to call it passwords okay i am going to copy and paste from here because you know what let's paste in place paste in place okay so let's create a title so we know we're working with the right amount of room pass words we are going to make this our page headers all right might be a little close but 
let's leave it for now. Okay, so we are going to basically just change some of this information around. Let's say website, website. And what I'm going to do here is we're going to redo all of this basically. So we're going to say user name space and now we're going to go ahead and hit our underline and then we're going to say shift tab over turn off our underline enter we're going to say password space hit the underline shift and tab underline again enter email linked space underline tab shift and tab hit the underline to turn it off enter and we're going to say notes space underline shift tab so that's what we're working with there so clearly we have um i'm going to ungroup this command shift g or control shift g will ungroup it um, because i want to make this smaller we don't need that so big all right we're going to make the box a bit smaller here um just oops let's grab the box let's grab just the box here there we go okay all right i think that's all right but let's group this again and let's see what we're working with as far as space is concerned so i'm holding option and shift and dragging over now we know the width is the same it's the height that we're looking at so i'm going to drag these down And let's step and repeat uh, four times. See how that goes. Okay. So we have, we're down too far. So our options are to get rid of a whole row, but we don't really want to do that. So let's bring this up a little bit. We can even bring this up a little bit. And then bring this up a little bit. And then we can decrease the gap between so let's go ahead and let's just select this first column and then select the first object to make it the key object and let's go we have the 0 0.03 let's see how that does we actually don't need that much so let's increase it to 0.04 and five and i think five is good so let's go ahead and let's do the same here five and now actually we can lower this all down one or two so we're not squishing password up there all right so we we're able to move everything around a little bit so now we have a simple password it's really easy that we used from the contacts now another simple easy version of passwords here this one is so easy but effective <laughs> How much information do you really need for those that just want to strictly keep track of their passwords only? Let's create a small little box. We are going to make this box. I'm going to give you the exact size because I know the exact size already. So 3.08 inches by 0.327 inches. Of course, this only works if you're making a 7 by 9 planner. Um, you will have to adjust things on your own, but... Um, I am now going to use my object styles boxes and we are going to decrease this curve, the corner, because you know, when it's small, it's just more dramatic. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to bring this, well, let's bring this up here. Okay. So I'm going to add a text box within here. And we are going to say a website. Adorn and 12 is fine. Let's leave it at 12. So now I'm going to copy this. Control option or option control. I'm going to bring this down. I don't need that much of a gap. So just bring it up a little bit. And then we are going to change this to a user name and then we are going to copy it one more time 
and we are going to name this one password. And that is it. That is it. That's as simple as that. We're just going to group these together and we will copy these over here. And then we will just hold option. We're going to copy these down, but you want to make sure you have a little bit of a gap there so that you know that this is separate. That looks fine there, I think. Let's go ahead and let's step and repeat that and say four times and see where we're at. That looks pretty good. I mean, we could just bring the whole thing down a little bit. It really is not that serious. Um, if you want to increase the space between each, you can do that as well. Um, if you want to fill um, these with colors, you can just click on the group and say peach and we will bring the tint down a bit and then you can say blue and bring the tint down and that will help people know like see easier the separate groups and add a little bit of color or you can keep it more simple like it is on the right we picked a lot of colors, didn't we? Tan. And gray. Don't know about the gray. Oh, the gray is fine. Okay, so you could add colors like that too if you want to. So it helps them to know um, which is grouped together. But that's it for the passwords. Um, and that's pretty easy and really that's it for all of them and you can see why it's not really necessary to go through um, with the doggy version you can just simply use your um, different colors so that's it for today's episode i hope that you were able to learn something from it um, and then it helped you out somewhat. I know it was a short one, but I do feel like it was an important one. So please let me know in the comments if you have any questions or if I didn't show you something that you need to know, make sure you ask me and I will do my best to get back to you. Um, in the next episode, we're going to be creating a vision and goals pages. So subscribe, hit the bell notification, and that way you won't miss the video when it comes out. And I will see you next time.